Now, I've talked before about the reasons why I thought raw adding a cruiserweight division was stupid, and I feel like I've been more than vindicated with the righteousness from the plane in which I delivered the message. Uh -huh. It has been good, and y'all know it. And there's all types of different reasons I've touched on them before. One of the most important things, I think, that doesn't get talked about enough, though, as to why the cruiserweights ultimately haven't been a successful venture on Raw so far, is the fact that we just don't know enough about enough of the performers to care enough about enough of the performers to get enough of them over to make the division important. Uh, we could blame the WWE, and ultimately, at the end of the day, the lion's share of the blame goes there. Because for a lot of people that didn't watch the cruiserweight specials, that don't pay attention to the independent scene at every waking moment, we're not that familiar with the guys like the Gulaks and the Davaris and the Rich Swans and what have you. We might know a TJ Perkins from being manic or suicide, but well, that doesn't fucking matter because he's still boring as piss. You know, when you look at the cruiserweight division, I think the biggest fundamental problem that the cruiserweight division has amongst all the other things, Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn's involvement to, you know, not featuring them like they matter, to starting off with the wrong champion. At the end of the day, the only guy that you really, frankly, are going to give any type of shit about is Brian Kendrick. Part of that is because he's actually good. He's actually one of the best wrestlers on that entire roster. But at the end of the day, you look at it, and I look at that cruiserweight division, and I look at their roster, and I say, I don't give a fuck about any of these guys except this dude. And he's the dude that I'm supposed to not like. He's the one really clearly established him. And he's the only guy I like, not to be counterculture, not to be different, but because he's the only guy that I have any reason to actually give a shit about. That's the major fundamental problem. And it's a major fundamental problem with the WWE product today. It's not just that the booking is bad, that the writing is bad, that the stories are terrible. It's the fact that you don't have the star power to overcome that. Shit, Ruthless Aggression Era, Attitude Era, Hogan Era. You know, not all the stories were good by any stretch of the imagination. But sometimes it was power of will and personality and character that shone above that, that overcame that, that still sucked you in. At the end of the day, that performer, that superstar, in theory, should be able to transcend any shit. It's that simple. Mae Young got giving birth to a hand over because Mae Young was fucking badass. I'm sorry. Y'all might want to disagree with me if you want, but that shit got over. People still remember it because Mae Young knew what the fuck she was doing. <laughs> Ridiculous example, maybe, but the point being is, is that I think back in the day, Hogan was involved in a lot of shitty angles uh, with guys that didn't have any business being involved with him, but he made it work because it was the power of his personality. You know, Savage, same thing. You know, for some, they would argue Ric Flair. Yeah, same thing. Um, you know... It helps when you have that star power, is my point. And I look at the cruiserweight division right now, and there's a clear lack of star power, but more so just people that you have a reason to give a shit about or should have a reason to give a shit about. And that's, to me, where Neville steps into the fold. Because Neville brings a lot of things to the table for this cruiserweight division, so I have absolutely no idea why the hell he's not involved. If you want to sit there and say you wanted to keep him separate because you didn't really want to classify him as a cruiserweight, or you didn't really know how committed you were to the cruiserweight concept and you didn't want him to get sucked up in that suck fest, at the end of the day, you rolled with it. And if you got it from con idea to concept to plan to actually execution in motion action, this is the reality. You have a cruiserweight division. So if you're going to waste television time towards this each week, devote a pay-per-view match to it each month, then you best damn sure get the most you can possibly out of it. And that's where I think Neville could potentially solve a lot of the ills for this cruiserweight division, at least in the short term. And I just don't understand why the hell the company hasn't, at least to my knowledge, jumped him right into the cruiserweight division. Maybe it's coming. 
but it should have already come. When you look at Neville, he's got some name recognition in terms of he's actually somewhat been established on the WWE main roster, which was a huge issue for a lot of these other cruiserweight guys. You know, a lot of the fans, now the hardcore fans are going to disagree with me, but again, they were only one portion of the total audience. So if you want to sit there and say that every single 1.4 million of the WWE subscribers were all here in the U.S., which is complete bullshit, but let's, let's just play along. Let's say all 1.4 million or so of them watch the WWE Network, watch the Cruiserweight Classic, and you say Raw averages 2.7 to 3 million viewers a week, that's still half of your audience who potentially doesn't know who the fuck any of these guys are. And the only reason they would know a guy like Brian Kendrick is from his previous runs in WWE going back 10, 15 years ago. So the Cedric Alexanders, the TJ Perkins, the Rich Swans, all these other guys, people aren't going to know shit about them. But at least with Neville, you've got some built-in face and name recognition because he's already been on the main roster. So he already starts off in a so much more advantageous position than 99% of the remaining cruiserweight division. You look at him, you know, he's an interesting guy in terms of uh, some of the moves that he is able to pull off. Now, granted, what good does it do if the WWE doesn't allow him to do it? But I think a guy like Neville, because... He had already started off with them outside of the Cruiserweight division. They might give him a little more leeway. And at the end of the day, at least you could say his finish, they're most certainly not going to pass on him doing that red arrow finish. But I look at it, and you need some type of strong babyface because at the end of the day, for the WWE to be successful, it isn't built off of the backs of long reigning heel champions. It just isn't. They've always been at their best when they've had the long reigning face champion that the heels are chasing. It kind of runs counterculture to a lot of things in terms of professional wrestling, but at the end of the day, that's what's always worked best for the WWE. When they've got a quality babyface holding the belt for a long time, a quality babyface, that's when it's better. When it's a long-reigning heel, they always just feel like a long-reigning transitional champion, and the company doesn't care as much. And that's just the way it absolutely is. So you look at a Neville, you've got name recognition. He's a guy that can do the cruiserweight shit. He's more familiar to the audience than everybody in that cruiserweight division outside of Brian Kendrick. He's got that indie following going back to his days as Pac on the independent scene. You know, he came up through NXT, so he has a lot more loyalty built up to him from some of that NXT audience as opposed to some of these other guys like the Alexanders and the Perkins and so forth who really didn't work NXT. They just came in via the Cruiserweight Classic. And then you look at the guy that you do give a shit about in this cruiserweight division in Brian Kendrick, and you say, Neville. Brian Kendrick, if I want to have a cruiserweight championship match at WrestleMania and it's one-on-one, -on -one, that's the match to me. That has to be the match. And at the end of the day, the Brian Kendrick is the perfect type of heel champion to get something more out of a Neville. So that way, when you get to WrestleMania, you can have Neville get that big signature moment, that big victory, and ultimately build that cruiserweight division around him for the time being. Because let's face it. With a guy like Neville, you make him into a star at the cruiserweight division based off of the way this company operates with their preference now for the smaller, more explosive athletes, you know, that could potentially be a gateway to making him potentially a main event star. You know, if a Finn Balor or somebody like that is going to get a world title run, then why the fuck isn't a Neville? I'm just saying, what's the difference? Maybe the lack of body paint, maybe the entrance, I don't know. But, you know, when it comes to in-ring stuff, Neville's more entertaining to me than a Finn Balor is. But, again, it comes down to this whole notion of this cruiserweight division being in place. If it's in place, then you got to put people in it that the audience is going to give a shit about. It's like with Finn Balor. You know, I look at him and I say, you hurry up and hot shot at him to the title. That was stupid. But you could do things right. You bring him back, and you bring him back via the cruiserweight division, and you have him and somebody like Neville help elevate the cruiserweight division. That could potentially be a gateway to them actually getting over to the point where they are necessitating some type of main event run in today's WWE environment. I mean, you think about Neville and Brian Kendrick. You could sit there with Brian Kendrick and have like one or two followers underneath him. Maybe it would be somebody like a Cedric Alexander and a TJ Perkins. And you set this whole thing up, and you've had it set up for months, 
where Neville's trying to get to Kendrick, but these guys are in the way. So he has to go through those guys in order to get to Kendrick at WrestleMania. Once he gets past Kendrick and done with Kendrick, then you have one of those other two guys flip babyface, and they, he can go with Kendrick, and the other guy can stay heel and work with Neville. Oh, my God, it makes too much sock fucking sense. People might actually give a shit about multiple feuds in a cruiserweight division. But you look at Neville. And I hate to see him get stuck in the purgatory of suck that he's ultimately going to be because if he just categorized as part of the main roster, he's just going to get lost in the shuffle, man. He's going to get buried. And again, you have a guy like him on the main roster for a reason. I look at a guy like Neville, especially when you're talking about doing that UK championship. You talk about trying to expand your reach and scope internationally. Here's a guy that could be a legitimate international superstar for you. Why in the hell would you not give him a platform to be able to show what he can do to potentially shine? Especially when you look at it from a cruiserweight division standpoint, if you want to see what type of star power or top guy ability he potentially has for you down the road, why would you not give him the opportunity here in the cruiserweight division to run with the ball and see what he can do with it? If he could do it at the cruiserweight level, maybe at some point in time in the future, he could do it at the top. It's what you used to do with belts like the Intercontinental Championship. You use those belts to help build guys up and get them ready for the main event above all else. It's just a lost art with this company now, and it's a shame. But again... I hate seeing a guy like Neville be wasted because I look at this guy and I'm not saying he's going to be your top guy in the company, but he's the type of guy that you can make money with. Especially compared to some of these other bums on the fucking main roster, both large and small. Neville can get over. Neville can be a much better version of Evan Bourne. And if utilized right, he can actually make some fucking money. So why not put him in a position to make some money with him? To me, if this company doesn't have him winning the Cruiserweight Championship by WrestleMania, they are absolutely fucking insane. It should be him versus Brian Kendrick at WrestleMania for the Cruiserweight title. Doing anything else is just a circle jerk and just like so many other things with the WWE, a colossal waste of fucking time. And if they do anything with Neville other than putting him right at the top of that Cruiserweight division right here, right now, then they are just wasting his time too and wasting your time, and wasting their fucking time. It's like the answer is so obvious, it's staring everybody in the fucking face. How the hell can WWE not see this? Neville needs to be in the cruiserweight division, because Neville can fix so many of the wrongs of the cruiserweight division. He's got name and face recognition. People will actually give a shit about him. He can actually get himself over in front of a WWE audience. Most importantly of all, he's familiar with the WWE way of doing things that some of these other guys weren't because he actually came up through NXT and he's actually had a, a stretch of run on the main Raw roster. Neville needs to be in the Cruiserweight division. Neville needs to be who that Cruiserweight division is built around. But of course the WWE will probably continue to waste your time with guys like Rich Swan and TJ Perkins. And the Cruiserweight division will continue to suck.